Despite six announced visits by U.S. astronauts between 1969 and 1972, the Moon remains a riddle to scientists in many regards. The solutions to these riddles could indicate an alien aspect of our familiar moon. Called the Rosetta Stone of the Planets by Dr. Robert Jastrow, the first chairman of NASA's Lunar Exploration Committee, scientists had hoped by studying the composition of the moon to resolve some of the mysteries of how our planet and solar system came into existence. Step on the Moon by astronaut Neil Armstrong was said to be one small step for man one giant leap for mankind but for many of the 12 men who have been there that one small step completely changed the way they saw the world some returned feeling as if they'd experienced enlightenment others spent the years following their lunar exploration depressed and hiding from the press some say that those quiet astronauts saw things the others hadn't secret things that they were asked to cover up After stepping on the moon, Buzz Aldrin's life fell apart. He went into a deep depression. His marriage of 21 years ended. He remarried and was divorced again within two years. He became an alcoholic. Within a few years, the former astronaut found himself selling used cars to make a living. When approached by the press, he seemed agitated and reluctant to share details of his mission. Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, is said to have been reclusive and possibly withdrawn. He also frustrated interviewers with his refusals and extremely private nature. Many people have wondered why they would struggle after such an achievement. I think that we were timely in accepting this mission of going to the moon. It might be timely at this point to think in many other areas of other missions that could be accomplished. Some believe it was because the entire moon landing was a hoax. Some think they saw proof of alien life, but it was kept quiet. Buzz did say in one interview that he observed a light moving alongside the ship. Others think that Buzz was just jealous at being the second man on the moon and Neil had always been quiet. We may never know because NASA erased the original moon landing footage. Whatever caused their depression, the truth is that there are many oddities about the moon. It's been a source of fascination since the dawn of humanity. Many ancient peoples worshipped it as a god or told legends about it. The Zulu tribe of Africa, for example, tells of two alien brothers who towed the moon into place and gave us the rhythms of the earth. Even today, its mysteries tantalize our minds. For example, the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun and 400 times closer to the earth. Because of this mysterious coincidence, when the moon passes in front of the sun during an eclipse, the moon completely blocks the much bigger sun. Yet scientists say that if the moon were not as it is, life may not have evolved past the sea. The moon affects the tides, and the tides made it possible for some sea creatures to reach land, where they eventually evolved into land animals. Science writer Earl Ubell declared, The lunar Rosetta Stone remains a mystery. The moon is more complicated than anyone expected. It's not simply a kind of billiard ball frozen in space and time, as many scientists have believed. Few of the fundamental questions have been answered, but the Apollo rocks and recordings have spawned a score of mysteries. In the pictures we showed earlier, you saw uh, rocks in the boulder field out Buzz's window that were three and four feet. Uh, in size, very likely uh, pieces of the lunar bedrock. And it would have been very interesting to go over and, and uh, get some samples of those. Among those breath-stopping mysteries, or anomalies as scientists prefer to call them, is the fact that the moon is far older than previously imagined, perhaps even much older than the Earth and Sun. By examining tracks burned into moon rocks by cosmic rays, scientists have dated them as billions of years old.
some have even dated back 4.5 billion years far older than the earth and nearly as old as the solar system the moon has at least three distinct layers of rocks contrary to the idea that heavier objects sink the moon rocks are found on the surface and there is definite disparity in the distribution of minerals you bell asked if the earth and moon were created at the same time near each other why is one body got all the iron the earth and the other the moon not much asked you bell the differences suggest that earth and moon came into being far from each other an idea that stumbles over the inability of astrophysicists to explain how exactly the moon became a satellite of the earth the moon is extremely dry and does not appear to have ever had water in any substantial amounts none of the moon rocks regardless of where they were found contained free water or even water molecules bound into the minerals yet Apollo 16 astronauts found moon rocks that contain bits of rusted iron since oxidation requires oxygen and free hydrogen this rust indicates that there must be water somewhere on the moon furthermore instruments left behind by Apollo missions sent a signal to earth on March 7 1971 indicating a wind of water had crossed the moon's surface uh, when you would knock either your foot or your hand against something uh, you would tend to shed the outer surface of this uh, material but there remain considerable smudges uh, I, I don't know how that got on the knees since any water on the airless moon surface vaporizes and behaves like wind on earth the question became where did this water originate the vapor cloud eruptions lasted 14 hours and covered an area of some 100 square miles prompting Rice University physicist dr. John Freeman jr. and dr. H Ken Hills to pronounce the event one of the most exciting discoveries yet indicating water within the moon the two physicists claim the water vapor came from deep inside the moon apparently released during a moon quake NASA officials offered a more mundane and questionable explanation they speculated that two tanks on Apollo descent stages contained between 60 and 100 pounds of water became stressed and ruptured releasing their contents Freeman and Hills declined to accept this explanation pointing out that the two tanks from Apollo 12 and 14 were some 180 kilometers apart yet the water vapor was detected with the same flux at both sites although the instruments faced in opposite directions skeptics also have understandably questioned the odds of two separate tanks breaking simultaneously and how such a small quantity of water could produce 100 square miles of vapor moon rocks were found to be magnetized not strong enough to pick up a paperclip but magnetic nonetheless however there is no magnetic field on the moon itself where did the magnetism come from the presence of Maria or large seas of smooth solidified molten rock also presented a mystery these Maria indicate nothing less than a vast outpouring of lava at some distant time it's now been confirmed that some of the moon's craters are of internal origin yet there's no indication that the moon has ever been hot enough to produce volcanic eruptions another puzzle is that almost all four-fifths of the Maria are located on the moon's earth side hemisphere few Maria mark the far side of the moon often erroneously referred to as the dark side yet the far side contains many more craters and mountainous areas you see uh, most of the craters have rounded edges however there is a variation in the uh, in the age of these as we can tell by the sharpness of the edge of the crater in comparison to the rest of the moon the Maria are relatively free of craters suggesting that craters were covered by lava flow adding to this mystery are the mascons large dense circular masses lying 20 to 40 miles below the center of the moon's Maria the mascons were discovered because their denseness distorted the orbits of our spacecraft flying over or near them one scientist proposed that the mascons are heavy iron meteorites that plunge deep into the moon while it was in a soft formable stage this theory has been discounted since meteorites strike with such velocity they would vaporize on contact 
Another mundane explanation is that the mascons are nothing more than lava-filled caverns, but skeptics say there isn't enough lava present to accomplish this. It would seem these mascons are huge disc-shaped objects, possibly of artificial construction. It's unlikely that large circular discs located directly under the center of the Maria, like a giant bullseye, happened by accident or coincidence. Between 1969 and 1977, Apollo mission seismographic equipment registered up to 3,000 moonquakes each year of operation. Most of the vibrations were quite small and were caused by meteorite strikes or falling booster rockets, but many other quakes were detected deep inside the moon. This internal creaking is believed to be caused by the gravitational pull of our planet as most moonquakes occur when the moon is closest to the earth. An event occurred in 1958 in the moon's Alphonsus crater, which shook the idea that all internal moonquake activity was simply settling rocks. In November of that year, Soviet astronomer Nikolay A. Kozarev of the Crimean Astrophysical Observatory startled the scientific world by photographing the first recorded gaseous eruption on the moon near the crater's peak. Kozarev attributed this to escaping fluorescent gases. He also detected a reddish glow characteristic of carbon compounds which seemed to move and disappear after an hour. Some scientists refused to accept Kozarev's findings until astronomers at the Lowell University also saw reddish glows on the crest of ridges at the Aristarchus region in 1963. Days later, colored lights on the moon lasting more than an hour were reported at two separate observatories. Something was going on inside the volcanically dead moon, and whatever it is, it occurs the same way at the same time. As the moon moves closer to the Earth, seismic signals from different stations on the lunar surface detect identical vibrations. It's difficult to accept this movement as a natural phenomenon. For example, a broken artificial hull plate could shift exactly the same way each time the moon passed near the Earth. There's evidence to indicate the moon may be hollow. Studies of moon rocks indicate that the moon's interior differs from the Earth's mantle in ways suggesting a very small or even non-existent core. As far back as 1962, NASA scientist Dr. Gordon McDonald stated, if the astronomical data are reduced, it's found that the data require that the interior of the moon be less dense than the outer parts. Indeed, it would seem that the moon is more like a hollow than a homogeneous sphere. Apollo 14 astronaut Dr. Edgar Mitchell, while scoffing at the possibility of a hollow moon, nevertheless admitted that since heavier materials were on the surface, it's quite possible that giant caverns exist within the moon. You, you cannot always tell just by looking at the terrain what the exact resistance will be as your foot sinks into a, a point of firm contact. So one must be quite cautious in, in moving around in this rough terrain. Uh, the the uh, footprint would penetrate perhaps a half an inch or sometimes only a quarter of an inch and gave a very firm response. In other regions near the edges of these craters, uh, we could find that the foot would, would sink down maybe two, three, possibly four inches. MIT's Dr. Sean C. Solomon wrote, The lunar orbiter experiments vastly improved our knowledge of the moon's gravitational field, indicating the frightening possibility that the moon might be hollow. Why frightening? The significance was stated by astronomer Carl Sagan way back in his 1966 work, Intelligent Life in the Universe. A natural satellite cannot be a hollow object. The most startling evidence that the moon could be hollow came on November 20, 1969, when the Apollo 12 crew, after returning to their command ship, sent the lunar module, LM, ascent stage, crashing back onto the moon, creating an artificial moonquake. The LM struck the surface about 40 miles from the Apollo 12 landing site, where ultra-sensitive seismic equipment recorded something both unexpected and astounding. The moon reverberated like a bell for more than an hour. The vibration wave took almost eight minutes to reach a peak, 
and then decreased in intensity at a news conference that day one of the co-directors of the seismic experiment Maurice Ewing told reporters that scientists were at a loss to explain the ringing as for the meaning of it I'd rather not make an interpretation right now but it's as though someone has struck a bell in the belfry of a church a single blow that found the reverberation from it continued for 30 minutes it was later established that small vibrations had continued on the moon for more than an hour the phenomenon was repeated when the Apollo 13's third stage was sent crashing onto the moon by radio command striking with the equivalent of 11 tons of TNT according to NASA this time the moon reacted like a gong although seismic equipment was more than 108 miles from the crash site recording showed reverberations lasted for 3 hours and 20 minutes and traveled to a depth of 22 to 25 miles subsequent studies of man-made crashes on the moon yielded similar results after one impact the moon reverberated for four hours this ringing coupled with the density problem on the moon reinforces the idea of a hollow moon scientists hope to record the impact of a meteor large enough to send shock waves to the moon's core and back to settle the issue that opportunity came on May 13 1972 when a large meteor struck the moon with the equivalent force of 200 tons of TNT after sending shock waves deep into the interior of the moon scientists were baffled to find that none returned confirming that there's something unusual about the moon's core or lack thereof dr. Farouk al Baz was quoted as saying there are many undiscovered caverns suspected to exist beneath the surface of the moon several experiments have been flown to the moon to see if there were actually such caverns the results of these experiments have not been made public it seems apparent that the moon has a tough hard outer shell and a light or non-existent interior the moon's shell contains dense minerals such as titanium used on earth in the construction of aircraft and space vehicles many people still recall watching our astronauts on TV as they vainly tried to drill through the crust of a moon Maria their specially designed drills could only penetrate a few inches the puzzle of the moon's hard surface was compounded by the discovery of what appeared to be processed metals experts were surprised to find lunar rocks bearing brass mica and amphibole in addition to the near pure titanium uranium 236 and neptunium 237 elements not previously found in nature were discovered in moon rocks according to Argonne National Laboratory while still trying to explain the presence of these materials scientists were further startled to learn of rust proof iron particles in a soil sample from the sea of crisis in 1976 the Associated Press reported that the Soviets had announced the discovery of iron particles that do not rust in samples brought back by unmanned moon mission in 1970 iron that doesn't rust is unknown in nature and well beyond present earth technology undoubtedly the greatest mystery concerning our moon is how it came to be there in the first place prior to the Apollo missions one serious theory as to the earth's origin was that it broke off the earth eons ago although no one could positively locate where on earth it originated many speculated the loss of material explained the huge gouge in the earth which forms the Pacific Ocean however this idea was discarded when it was found that there's little similarity between the composition of our world and the moon a more recent theory had the moon created out of space debris left over from the creation of the earth this concept proved untenable in light of current gravitational theory which indicates that one large object will accumulate all loose material leaving none for the formation of another large body it's now generally accepted that the moon originated elsewhere and entered the Earth's gravitational field at some point in the distant past here theories diverge one stating that the moon was originally a planet which collided with the earth creating debris which combined forming the moon while another states that the moon while wandering through our solar system was captured and pulled into orbit by Earth's gravity neither of these theories are especially compelling because of the lack of evidence that neither the earth nor the moon seem to have been physically disrupted by a past close encounter 
there's no debris in space indicating a past collision and it does not appear that the earth and moon developed during the same time period as for the capture theory even scientist Isaac Asimov well known for his works of fiction has written it's too big to have been captured by the earth the chances of such a capture having been affected and the moon then having taken up nearly circular orbit around our earth are too small to make such an eventuality credible Asimov was right to consider the moon's orbit it's not only near a perfect circle but stationary one side always faces the earth with only the slightest variation as far as we know it's the only natural satellite with such an orbit this circular orbit is especially odd considering that the moon's center of mass lies more than a mile closer to the earth than its geometric center this fact alone should produce an unstable wobbly orbit much as a ball with its mass off center will not roll in a straight line additionally almost all of the other satellites in our solar system orbit in the plane of their planets equator not so the moon whose orbit lies strangely near the earth's orbit around the Sun or inclined to the earth's elliptical by more than five degrees add to this the fact that the moon's bulge located on the side facing away from earth thus negating the idea that it was caused by Earth's gravitational pull makes for an off-balanced world. In 1961, President Kennedy boldly declared before a joint session of Congress that the United States would send a man to the moon and return him safely to the Earth within a decade. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. During the initial time period after touchdown, uh, we went through various uh, sequences to prepare us for immediate abort. It seems impossible that such an oddity could naturally fall into such a precise and circular orbit. It's a fascinating conundrum as articulated by science writer William Roy Shelton who wrote, It is important to remember that something had to put the moon at or near its present circular pattern around the Earth. Just as a spacecraft circling the Earth every 90 minutes, well, 100 miles high, has to have a velocity of roughly 18,000 miles per hour to stay in orbit, so something had to give the Moon precisely required velocity for its weight and altitude. The point, and it's one seldom noted in considering the origin of the Moon, is that it's extremely unlikely that any object would just stumble into the right combination of factors required to stay in orbit something had to put the moon at its altitude on its course and at its speed the question is what was that something if the precise and stationary orbit of the moon is seen as sheer coincidence it's also coincidence that the moon is at just the right distance from the earth to completely cover the Sun during an eclipse while the diameter of the moon is a mere 2160 miles against the Sun's gigantic 864,000 miles it is nevertheless in just the proper position to block out all but the Sun's flaming corona when it moves between the Sun and the earth Asimov explained there's no astronomical reason why the moon and Sun should fit so well it is the sheerest of coincidences and only the earth among all the planets is blessed in this fashion is it mere coincidence how does one explain this and many other moon mysteries in July 1970 two Russian scientists Mikhail Vassin and Alexander Sherbakov published an article in the Soviet journal Sputnik entitled is the moon the creation of alien intelligence 
They advance the theory that the moon is not a completely natural world but a planetoid that was hollowed out eons ago in the far reaches of space by intelligent beings possessing a technology far superior to ours. Huge machines were used to melt rock and form large cavities within the moon, spewing the molten refuse onto the surface. Protected by a hull-like inner shell plus a reconstructed outer shell of metallic rocky junk, this gigantic craft was steered through the cosmos and finally parked in orbit around the Earth. In their article, Vassin and Sherbakov wrote, Abandoning the traditional paths of common sense, we've plunged into what may at first seem to be unbridled and irresponsible fantasy. But the more minutely we go into all the information gathered by man about the moon, the more we're convinced that there's not a single fact to rule out this supposition. Not only that, but many things so far considered to be lunar enigmas are explainable in the light of this new hypothesis. Outrageous as the spaceship moon theory might first appear, consider how this model reconciles all the mysteries of the moon. It would explain why the moon gives evidence of being much older than the Earth and perhaps even our solar system, and why there are three distinct layers within the moon, with the densest materials on the outside layer exactly as one would expect of the hull of a spacecraft. It could also explain why no signs of water has been found on the moon's surface, yet there's evidence it exists deep inside. This theory also would explain the strange Maria and mascons, perhaps the remnants of the machinery used to hollow out the moon. The idea of an artificial satellite could explain the odd rhythmic moonquakes as artificial constructs reacting the same way during periods of stress from the Earth's pull. And artificial equipment beneath the moon's surface might be the source of the gas clouds that have been observed. Intelligent terraforming of the moon could prove the solution to the argument between hot moon and cold moon scientists. They're both right. The moon originally was a cold world, which was transformed into a spacecraft by artificially heating or expelling vast quantities of its interior. This theory could also explain these seeming contradictions over the question of a hollow moon. If the moon originally were a solid world, which was artificially hollowed out, there would be evidence of both phases, exactly what we have with the current moon knowledge. An artificially hollowed out moon would explain why the satellite rings like a bell for hours after being struck and why specimens of tough refractory metals such as titanium, chromium and zirconium, rust proof iron, uranium 236 and neptunium 237 have been found there. In fact, the spaceship moon theory may come closer to any other in reconciling the questions over the origin and amazing orbit of the moon. But we're not supposed to consider this thesis. The circular logic of modern science regarding the origins of the moon runs something like this. We know that extraterrestrials don't exist, but we do know that the moon exists and has been mentioned throughout human history. We humans did not create or place it in Earth's orbit, so it must have been done by extraterrestrials. But since we know they don't exist, we'll simply call it an anomaly and will not publicly say anything more about this. Is there an alien base on the moon? More and more people are coming forward with stories of an alien presence on the moon. Rumors are that their moon base is on the dark side of the moon, the side we never see from Earth. Did you ever wonder why the moon landing stopped and why we've not tried to build a moon base? I understand that some believe that we should attempt a return to the surface of the moon first, as previously planned. But I, I, I just have to say uh, pretty bluntly here, we've been there before. It seems a better and easier idea than a floating space station. According to Neil Armstrong, the aliens have a base on the moon and wanted us to get off and stay off the moon. Milton Cooper, a naval intelligence officer, tells us that the intelligence community calls the alien base Luna. Luna the alien base on the far side of the moon. It was seen and filmed by the Apollo astronauts. A base, a mining operation using very large machines and the very large alien craft described in sightings reports as motherships exist there. Milton Cooper
Did Apollo 11 encounter UFOs on the moon? From the book Above Top Secret by Timothy Good. According to hitherto unconfirmed reports, both Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin saw UFOs shortly after that historic landing on the moon in Apollo 11 on the 21st of July, 1969. I remember hearing one of the astronauts refer to a light in or on a crater during the television transmission, followed by a request from Mission Control for further information. Nothing more was heard. According to a former NASA employee, Otto Binder, unnamed radio hams with their own VHF receiving facilities that bypassed NASA's broadcasting outlets picked up the following exchange. NASA, what's there? Mission Control calling Apollo 11. Apollo 11, these babies are huge, sir, enormous. Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you there are other spacecraft out there lined up on the far side of the crater edge. They're on the moon watching us. In 1979, Maurice Shadlin, former chief of NASA communication system, confirmed that Armstrong had indeed reported seeing two UFOs on the rim of a crater. The encounter was common knowledge in NASA, he revealed, but nobody's talked about it until now. Soviet scientists were allegedly the first to confirm the incident. According to our information, the encounter was reported immediately after the landing of the module, said Dr. Vladimir Azaza, a physicist and professor of mathematics at Moscow University. Neil Armstrong relayed the message to Mission Control that two large, mysterious objects were watching them after having landed near the moon module, but this message was never heard by the public because NASA censored it. According to another Soviet scientist, Dr. Alexander Kazantsev, Buzz Aldrin took color movie film of the UFOs from inside the module and continued filming them after he and Armstrong went outside. Dr. Azaza claims that the UFOs departed minutes after the astronauts came out to the lunar surface. Maurice Shadlin also confirmed that Apollo 11's radio transmissions were interrupted on several occasions in order to hide the news from the public. Before dismissing Shadlin's sensational claims, it's worth noting his impressive background in the aerospace industry and space program. His first job after moving from France was as some electronics engineer with Convair, specializing in telecommunications, telemetry, and radar. In 1959, he was in charge of an electromagnetic research group, developing new radar and telecommunication systems for Ryan. One of his 11 patents was an automatic radar landing system that ignited retro rockets at a given altitude used in the Ranger and Surveyor flights to the moon. Later, at North American Aviation, Chanelin was offered the job of designing and building the Apollo communications and data processing systems. Chanelin claims that all Apollo and Gemini flights were followed both at a distance and sometimes also quite closely by space vehicles of extraterrestrial origin, flying saucers or UFOs if you want to call them that. Every time it occurred, the astronauts informed Mission Control, who then ordered absolute silence. He goes on to say, I think that Walter Shearer aboard Mercury 8 was the first of the astronauts to use the code name Santa Claus to indicate the presence of flying saucers next to space capsules. However, his announcements were barely noticed by the general public. It was a little different when James Lovell, on board the Apollo 8 command module, came out from behind the moon and said for everybody to hear, please be informed that there is a Santa Claus. Even though this happened on Christmas Day 1968, many people sensed a hidden meaning in those words. Rumors persist. NASA may well be a civilian agency, but many of its programs are funded by the defense budget and most of the astronauts are subject to military security regulations. Apart from the fact that the National Security Agency screens all films and probably radio communications as well, we have the statements by Otto Binder. Dr. Gary Henderson and Maurice Chatelain that the astronauts were under strict orders not to discuss their sightings. And Gordon Cooper has testified to the United Nations Committee that one of the astronauts actually witnessed a UFO on the ground. If there's no secrecy, why is this sighting 
not been made public a certain professor who wished to remain anonymous was engaged in a discussion with Neil Armstrong during a NASA symposium professor what really happened out there with Apollo 11 Armstrong it was incredible of course we had always known there was a possibility the fact is we were warned off there was never any question then of a space station or a moon city professor how do you mean warned off Armstrong I can't go into details except to say that their ships were far superior to ours both in size and technology boy were they big and menacing no there's no question of a space station professor but NASA had other missions after Apollo 11 Armstrong naturally NASA was committed at that time and couldn't risk panic on earth but it really was a quick scoop and back again Armstrong confirmed that the story was true but refused to go into further detail beyond admitting that the CIA was behind the cover-up how much do we really know about this mysterious orb after much scientific study many questions still remain unanswered